Life as a man is exceptionally difficult. I say the most beautiful and the most terrifying thing about being a man is you're born without value. Society doesn't care about you. You're only going to be cared about based on how useful you are. You have the chance to build yourself up and become a superhero if you're prepared to do the hard work and be indefatigable enough to never quit. But if you're going to stand around and wait for a handout, nobody's going to ever respect you. I think that a lot of people have forgotten about how difficult and how competitive it is as a man. We're always in constant competition with each other. And it's your duty as a man to stand up and say, I want to be as important and strong and good-hearted and God-fearing as possible. And I need to work hard to achieve those things. If you look at the true warriors of humanity, you look at the true empire builders, you look at the true titans who are constructing a better world, they're less about pleasure seeking because they understand that if you want to have a great life, a soaring life, look at what most people do and do the opposite. Growth comes through discomfort. You look at a great athlete, it's the way they show up in the championship game is simply how they showed up in the lonely light of the early hours at practice. To have the results, only 5% of the population have. You've got to be willing to do the things that only 5% of the population are willing to do. I was a four-time kickboxing world champion. For 12 years, I trained five hours a day, six days a week. And I was motivated to train probably about 25% of the time. The rest of the time I went because I am disciplined. You don't feel like going through that sh on a Wednesday morning when you wake up, and you have to do it because you're disciplined. You're either a disciplined individual or you are not a disciplined there's, there's, there's a difference between want and want. And I say this all the time. People say to me, I want to be rich. And I say, okay, well, I want to be able to ice skate, but I don't want to be able to ice skate enough to go learn how to ice skate, so I can't be bothered. I, I mean, surely if I could click my fingers and be a figure skater, I'd, I'd click my fingers, who wouldn't? But I don't want to actually go train. Cause it's, cause it's, I, don't, I don't want it enough. And this is the exact point with money. Everyone wants money put on their lap. If you truly wanted money, you wouldn't be able to sleep until you fucking had it. The masters make the hardest things in the world look easiest. And in the moments where you push yourself, those moments tend to lead to success. But you've got to stop rationalizing, stop making excuses, stop telling yourself little watered down assessments of where you're really at. Tell yourself the truth. And the truth shall set you free. And the truth that I had to come to grips with, that I wasn't in charge of my destiny. The truth was that I wasn't giving all that I had. The truth was that there are some things that I wanted to do, but I didn't have the courage to act on those things. I had to start looking at my life differently. I started going to work earlier. I started being the last one to leave there. I started working harder than anybody else. I am not motivated to do the things I'm supposed to do. I don't wake up full of like joy. I have to go to the gym or that I have to work or not do crap. I don't feel motivated to do them. I'm disciplined. I do them regardless of how I feel. Whether I'm in the mood to do it or I'm not in the mood to do it, it gets done. That's discipline. Discipline's a real thing. Motivation is fleeting. You're never going to be permanently motivated. If you're the kind of person who can only try hard at something he enjoys, then you're going to fail. If you truly want to win, you can't only want to win when you're happy and you can't only want to win when you're motivated. You're competing against men like me who will perform even when it's raining, not only when the sun is shining. If you're going to be the kind of person who can only do it, one of those scenarios you are going to lose. You must be prepared to perform all of the time. I have a lot of people who message me and say, oh, I struggle with motivation. My answer is simple. Then stay a loser. If you can't find the motivation to not be a loser, then I strongly recommend you just stay a loser, stay in your lane, stay out of my way. I have no time for people who cannot find the motivation to fix themselves and fix their own lives. If you cannot control your own mind, then you go through life with zero control, zero influence. You can't control anything. You're just a feather in the wind waiting for life to blow you from happy place to sad place to happy place to sad place completely hoping on the gods to be fortunate to you because if any genuine discomfort comes your way, you're fine. We're clouded with doubt, and we wonder why it is so difficult for us to grow into the version of the best version of ourselves. Like, we wonder why it is so difficult to climb that mountain, to get over that obstacle. It's because we are not looking at the opportunity with the right perspective. Break the patterns that have been leading your life, but you need to identify what the patterns are. I think sometimes we get, we just aren't even aware. 
It's just a pattern that's running. It's something that's happening. Maybe it's been happening for months or years or decades. We're not even aware. It's just become our identity. So when you identify the negative identity patterns that are holding you back, that's the first step. And you can start to really shift and replace it with a new identity, a new pattern that you can implement. What you do is you pick up your past and you embrace it. You understand it, you accept it, as I had to go through these things that I had to go through in order for me to get to this place today. And the evidence for that is that I did. You don't need any more evidence. You did. And then you toss it. You toss it. You embrace it, and you toss it. And you merge into the now by giving up your attachment. Before you can do something, your verse must be something. Mm. So you've got to be it intellectually. You've got to be it emotionally. As Sake Solomon says, as a person who has been their heart, the emotional man. Well, it's only a period of time then until it manifests physically. That's one of the first laws of the universe is the perpetual transmutation of energy. Energy is moving into form. Always. Mm. Two form, moving into form, through form, back into form again. So we cause it all to happen the way we think and the way we stay locked into ideas. I don't think greatness is something you're born with, some mysterious power bestowed upon us by God. It's something that truly exists in everyone. I look at it as a superpower we all have, buried deep inside us. This tiny diamond surrounded by layers and layers of rock, the hardest rock in the universe. And every time you do something good, a piece of that rock breaks away. We control where awareness goes, we're controlling where energy is flowing. And if we're controlling where energy is flowing, we're controlling what's manifesting in our life. All I need to do is control where my awareness goes. And if I can control where my awareness goes, I can control where my energy is flowing. And if I can control where my energy is flowing, I can control what is manifesting in my life. Every single person that wins bit, every single person that you look at, every single person that you're inspired by, every single person that you aspire to be like, they only have one plan, and that is they are gonna win or they are gonna die trying. You can make your dream into a reality, but it will only take one person to believe that it's possible. It will only take one person to put in the work. That person is you. If you're sitting down and you start thinking about uh, some future worst case scenario that you're conjuring up in your mind and you begin to feel the emotion of that event, your body doesn't know the difference between the event that's taking place in your world, outer world, and what you're creating by emotion or thought alone. So most people then, they're, they're constantly reaffirming their emotional states. So when it comes time to give up that emotion, they can say, I really want to do it. But really, the body is stronger than the mind because it's been conditioned that way. So the servant now has become the master. And the person, all of a sudden, once they step into that unknown, they'd rather feel guilt and suffering because at least they can predict it. Being in the unknown is a scary place for most people because the unknown is uncertain. And people say to me, well, I can't predict my future. I'm in the unknown, and I always say the best way to predict your future is to create it. Not from the known, but from the unknown. What thoughts do you want to fire and wire in your brain? What behaviors do you want to demonstrate in one day? The act of rehearsing the mentally, closing your eyes, and rehearsing the action. The rehearsing the reaction of what you want? Or the yeah, action the you... action of what you want. By closing your eyes and mentally rehearsing some action. If you're truly present, the brain does not know the difference between what you're imaging and what you're experiencing in 3D world. So then you begin to install the neurological hardware in your brain to look like the event has already occurred. Now, your brain is no longer a record of the past. Now it's a map to the future. And if you keep doing it, priming it that way, the hardware becomes a software program. The law of expectation says that your expectations tend to become your own self-fulfilling prophecies. In other words, what you expect to happen usually does. And if your expectations are based on false information, so you have false expectations, that's what will happen anyway. For instance, your expectations could be that you are destined to have an extraordinary life and be extremely successful. 
is that no matter what happens, it's all part of a learning process that is leading you inevitably to great success, happiness, and accomplishment. And if you absolutely expect that to be true, if that's your fundamental belief, then over time that will become true. You'll be able to throw off the ups and downs of life. You'll be able to ignore the negative influences around you. If you confidently expect to be a great success, then by gum, you sure will be. No matter what people tell you, you just say, well, it'll be all right. Everything will work out fine. And we know that an attitude of confident expectation is a hallmark of highly successful people. They just expect to succeed more than they fail. They expect to be liked by others more often than they're disliked. They expect to learn from every difficulty that they have. They expect to keep making progress. They just confidently expect it. And surprise, surprise, your expectations affect your realities. How, what you experience on the outside is determined by how you think on the inside. As they say, you are not what you think you are, but what you think you are. In the Bible it says, as a man thinketh in his heart, which means in his subconscious mind, way down deep, so is he. According to your faith, it's done unto you, and so on. Big picture thinking can benefit any person in any profession. When somebody like Jack Welch tells a G employee that the ongoing relationship with the customer is more important than the sale of an individual product, he's reminding them of the big picture. When two parents are fed up with potty training, poor grades or fender, bender, benders and one reminds the other that the current difficult time is only a temporary season, then they benefit from thinking big picture. You have to think anyway, so why not think big? Big picture thinking brings wholeness and maturity to a person's thinking. It brings perspective. It's like making the frame of a picture bigger in the process, expanding not only what you can see, but what you are able to do. Big picture thinkers are never satisfied with what they already know. They are always visiting new places, learning new skills. And because of that practice, they often are able to connect the unconnected. They are lifelong learners. To help me maintain a learner's attitude, I spend a few moments every morning thinking about my learning opportunities for the day. As I review my calendar and to do list, knowing whom I will meet that day, what I will read, which meetings I will attend, I note where I am most likely to learn something. Then I mentally cue myself to look attentively for something that will improve me in that situation. If you desire to keep learning, I want to encourage you to examine your day and look for opportunities to learn. Writer Henry David Thoreau wrote, Many an object is not seen, though it falls within the range of our visual ray, because it does not come within the range of our intellectual ray. Who you are determines what you see and how you think. Big picture thinkers realize there is a world out there besides their own, and they make an effort to get outside of themselves and see other people's worlds through their eyes. It's hard to see the picture while inside the frame. To see how others see, you must first find out how they think. Becoming a good listener certainly helps with that. So does getting over your personal agenda and trying to take the other person's perspective. French essayist Michel Iquem de Montaigne wrote, the value of life lies not in the length of days, but in the use we make of them. A man may live long yet live very little. The truth is that you can spend your life any way you want, but you can spend it only once. Becoming a big picture thinker can help you to live with wholeness, to live a very fulfilling life. People who see the big picture expand their experience because they expand their world. As a result, they accomplish more than narrow-minded people. And they experience fewer unwanted surprises too, because they are more likely to see the many components involved in any given situation. Issues, people, relationships, timing and values. They are also therefore usually more tolerant of other people and their thinking. 